Good afternoon, and welcome to the College of Arts and Sciences Sandoff for the class of 2020. My name is David Horn, and it's my pleasure to host today's event. Before we get started, I'd like to take a minute to recognize the people who made it possible for us to be virtually gathered here today. I want first to thank Kevin Leonardi and his team in ASC Communications and Alan Coleman from ASC Tech for bringing this Zoom session together. We are also grateful to all of the departments across our college that contributed the images and videos you will see today, and to Margaret O'Brien, a student from the Department of English, for composing a poem for today's event. I also want to recognize the incredible work of the arts and sciences faculty and graduate students who in the space of just two weeks in March moved 4,000 classes online. They figured out how to teach not only lectures and seminars, but also dance, studio art, and physics labs when we could no longer be in the same rooms with each other. The college staff, from academic advisors to education abroad coordinators to career success counselors, helped our students to navigate this extraordinary semester, finding creative solutions to problems they had never before encountered. Thanks to the parents, siblings, and partners of our students who turned their homes into classrooms, who tolerated internet service that slowed to a crawl, and who in so many other ways adjusted to the everyday ups and downs of college life. Thanks, finally, to all of you who will graduate tomorrow. Thank you for your patience, your flexibility, and your good humor during this difficult time. Thank you for meeting your instructors halfway. Thank you for looking for and for creating moments of celebration and connection in the midst of anxiety and isolation. And thank you most of all for taking care of yourselves and the people around you. I am now pleased to introduce our first speaker, the Executive Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, Gretchen, Gretchen Ritter. Dean Ritter came to Ohio State last summer after serving most recently as Dean of Arts and Sciences at Cornell University and has guided our college through perhaps the most challenging year in its history. Her scholarship and teaching have explored questions at the intersection of political science, legal history, women's studies, and economics, a perfect example of the kinds of critical inquiry a broad liberal arts education makes possible. Please welcome Dean Ritter. Thank you, David, and hello, everyone. I am so pleased to welcome our graduates, your family, and friends to this virtual graduation ceremony. I know this isn't the kind of graduation ceremony you were expecting or hoping for. As a parent of a 2020 graduate myself, I understand the sense of disappointment you feel for being denied the opportunity to connect in person with beloved professors, advisors, classmates, and mentors. Many of you had to leave before that final presentation, performance, exhibition, or oral defense, though quite a few of you got a chance to do online versions of those. The postponement of our planned graduation is a loss not only for our students, but also for your parents, grandparents, aunts, and uncles who expected to gather with you here on campus to show pride in all you have achieved and to launch you into adulthood. Yet there are silver linings here as well. A college or graduate degree from a great institution such as The Ohio State University is not a short-term resource. It is a lifelong asset which equips our graduates not only with the skills and knowledge to be productive contributors to today's economy, but also with the orientation, critical thinking skills, and intellectual flexibility to succeed over the long term and to help us address the deep human, social, and scientific challenges that this crisis has so starkly revealed. Over the course of this extraordinary spring, you have learned the lesson of resilience. You have experienced, often by painful absence, the power of human connection. You have seen how critical scientific expertise is for understanding and addressing COVID-19. The way this virus has raced across continents, devastating human health 
and national economies in its path provides a powerful lesson in human interdependence and the risks that come when we fail to recognize how increased vulnerabilities in some populations have implications for us all. Turning upward and outward, many of you have seen and felt the role that art and creativity can play in challenging times, fostering empathy, connection, and especially hope. You have seen the pandemic's effects upend lives. Yet we have seen as well that Ohio State's strength has always been and always will be people and our potential to solve problems together. In the face of this crisis, from within the ranks of the university, we've seen scientists from the Infectious Disease Institute who are working to understand the virus, how it spreads and how it impacts human health. Geographers, sociologists, and data scientists from across campus are helping to model how the disease progresses through communities so that we're better prepared to treat the sick and reopen our state safely. And political scientists who are helping elected officials to rethink what meaningful engagement looks like and how to bolster democratic processes in an era of social distancing. And our faculty aren't the only ones contributing. I've been inspired by your ingenuity and hard work as well. Student journalists from The Lantern continued their work from afar, reporting on the pandemic and the university's response to it. Students in dance continued their movement courses through Zoom, transforming their living rooms into makeshift studios. Other found, others found ways to conduct virtual labs, virtual research, and even virtual dissertation defenses. The flexibility that you have demonstrated is a hallmark of an arts and sciences education, and it is a skill that will serve you across your lifetime. Moments of challenge are moments when the human spirit is most powerfully revealed. During the depths of the Civil War, President Lincoln addressed this in his second inaugural when he said, fondly do we hope, fervently do we pray that this mighty scourge of war may speedily pass away. Even at that moment of strife and loss, Lincoln was able to look ahead to a time when the nation would begin to heal and rebuild. He wrote, with malice toward none and charity for all, let us strive on to finish the work we are in to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and his orphan, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. We are thankful for the commitment and contributions of the doctors and scientists, the grocery clerks and public health officials, the artists and the nurses. We celebrate your graduation at this key moment in our nation and world's history. In a way that feels less boisterous or sanguine, more measured and more grounded in a sense of collective responsibility and social interdependence, we honor all that you have achieved. Thankful to the teachers, family members, and advisors who brought you to this moment and grateful for your ability to rise up and help create the post COVID-19 world we must all build together. Congratulations, Arts and Sciences, Class of 2020. Our next speaker is Scott Gowdy from the Department of Astronomy. 
Scott has helped discover more than 50 planets outside our solar system and has won numerous awards and recognitions for that work from professional societies and government agencies. Scott is a popular teacher described by one student as a legend and is a passionate advocate for underrepresented groups in astronomy. Please welcome Professor Gowdy. Uh, thank you, Dean Horn. Um, greetings, class of 2020. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, I want to wish you a hearty congratulations on all your accomplishments. We are in difficult times, as we have all lost parts of ourselves to this, to this virus. For some, your last semester at this remarkable university was taken from you. For some, the toll was much, much worse in that you lost a friend, a family member, or a loved one. But of course, this too shall pass. We will get through this as a state, a country, a generation, and a species. But the other side will not look like where we were before. We have learned so much about ourselves, our fortitude, and our priorities, and there, are no, there is no going back. And so we will have choices to make. As an example from my field, right now as we speak, a committee convened by the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine is deliberating on the fate of astronomy and astrophysics for the next decade. This decadal survey is a tradition that has been part of my field for over 50 years, and the results of these surveys largely dictate the course of astronomy. And now, at this very unusual time in history, one large question looms over us. Will we react conservatively and carry forward with us the fear and dread that many of us have been feeling over the past few months? Or will we be brave and use this experience as an opportunity to reimagine ourselves and create bold new plans and endeavors? Now is also an unusual time in our, in our history for another reason. Now for the first time in human history, if we so choose, we could search for, and maybe even find, evidence for life outside the solar system, life in the universe. Now, for the first time, we could answer the age-old question, are we alone? I know this sounds crazy, but I assure you it's not. For the past four years, I was the co-chair of a NASA study that developed a mission concept with the technology necessary to achieve the seemingly impossible goal within the next 15 to 20 years. I work closely with, most closely with NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, or JPL, to develop this mission. JPL has built such incredible things as the Voyager missions, the Mars Viking missions, the Mars Lander Curiosity, and the Cassini spacecraft. The first time I visited NASA's JPL, I was met with a 30 foot long sign with letters that spelled out, Dare Mighty Things. We used to dare mighty things, but we got lost somewhere. A movie from the line Interstellar says it best. We used to stare up at the sky and wonder at about our place in the stars, but now we just look down and worry about our place in the dirt. But now we're at a turning point. Now we have a choice. Let us make the choice to be brave. Let us no longer worry about our place in the dirt. Let us wonder about our place in the stars. Let, let us search for life in the universe and do all of the other things that we as a species are capable of doing if we so choose. In the words of John F. Kennedy, let us do these things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. We can use the lessons we have learned over the past few months to shape a whole new society and a whole new world. And you will be at the forefront of this monumental change. You represent the hope that will carry us past these troubled times into a brighter future for, for humanity than we could have even hoped back during our first few days at OSU. So we look to you, be brave, remain in light, dare mighty things. Thank you.
There are very few things I am certain about. I am certain of uncertainty. I am certain of impermanence and the way anything I could clasp in my palms could be taken away in a matter of minutes, no matter the ferociousness of my clutch. All matter is like this. Tonight is no different. April's pink moon. Just open up your eyes and you'll see. Time after time, I find that I'm struggling. I tell you what's burning inside. In the pine so scented air, somewhere that's green. How it feels when planning a sky. How it feels when voice that comes from the window go. Do you need help with like reading skills? <laughs> because otherwise I don't really know how. Are you asking if I can read? Like, yeah, kind of. I am certain the moon is not actually pink, as the internet confirms. The name comes from the first of the spring flowers, the wild ground phlox, flowers that bloom at this same April time, crocheting earth in their fresh pink blanket. We venture from the second floor bedroom onto slanted roof tiles. My roommate stumbles out of the window, you must bend your knees, I say. Certain our bodies can adapt to the rough and calloused. The joke of it all, we can't even see the moon from the roof. The top half of the house restricts our view. Down the stairs and into the front lawn, we make our final descent. One quick shift in perspective, enough to reveal the spectacle. It's been here all along. The moon, its pinkness, its pull. It blossoms in darkness, its very own magic trick, a gift of illusion. We gaze toward the glaring pink, our eyes always in search of that which is blooming. Our final speaker today is Barbara Piperata from the Department of Anthropology. Barbara is a specialist in nutritional anthropology whose research is focused on food and water scarcity in the cultures of Central and South America. A student described taking her class on women's health and global perspective as a mind explosion. Barbara recently created a new major in medical anthropology and the first three students to finish that major will graduate tomorrow. Please welcome Professor Piperata. Thank you, Dr. Horn, for your introduction. Greetings and congratulations, Buckeyes, on this great accomplishment. Let me begin by asking that you join me in expressing our sincerest thanks to the teachers, parents, friends, and staff who helped make your years at Ohio State a success. It is my honor to deliver commencement remarks to this outstanding student body. Today, I want to focus on the value of stepping out of our comfort zone and how the enormous adaptive capacity of our species demands we do this in order to grow and develop as individuals, as well as engage in the collective action required to solve our global problems. Our adaptive capacity is flexed in response to the challenges that nudge us, push us, sometimes shove us into uncharted territory. Moving into uncharted territory can be unnerving. After all, we've been knocked out of our comfort zone. 
that place dominated by routine and predictability, a place where with our senses dampened, we can get by or even feel as though we're doing well. 25 years ago, I left a well-paying, comfortable job in biotech to spend three months in Nicaragua as part of an archeological field school. My time in Nicaragua nudged me out of my comfort zone. Coming from the dry climate of the Southwestern United States, the humidity in Nicaragua felt oppressive. I began sweating the second I stepped out of my daily, shockingly ice cold morning shower. Rice and beans for breakfast and for lunch and for dinner. My digestive system was certainly in uncharted territory. My experiences there pushed me out of my comfort zone. With mediocre Spanish, I struggled with the most basic tasks, locating the right bus, communicating basic needs, and responding to simple questions. I'm sure people thought I was stupid. I felt stupid. I felt incompetent. I felt completely out of my comfort zone. My interactions there shoved me out of my comfort zone. Our archeological digs were conducted in one of the poorest neighborhoods in Managua, the country's capital city. On a daily basis, I worked surrounded by hungry people who were by necessity, far more interested in our food and monetary resources than the rich cultural resources we were excavating from the ground. Both they and I questioned how I was spending my time. And on a regular basis, those who only a few years earlier survived what was perceived as an invasion by my own country, questioned my motivations for the for and my right to be in their country. None of this was particularly comfortable, but I do not regret a minute of the discomfort. The experience changed me, the course of my life and my career. It shaped my interest in understanding how the biosocial context shapes food security and maternal child health and gave me the confidence to pursue a PhD in biological anthropology, for which I spent two years living in the Brazilian Amazon. Our ancestors have been wandering this planet for millions of years. Over that time, we have faced enormous challenges. Our responses to these challenges shaped who we are today. Our success is certainly not due to any great speed or strength, but rather to the evolution of our large brain and the enormous adaptive capacity and flexibility it provides us. This is our great strength. Moving outside our comfort zone provides us the experiences we need to realize our enormous adaptive capacity, to flex our adaptive muscle. It is outside our comfort zone that we learn to take risks and overcome our fear of failure. It builds confidence it serves as the stimulus for creativity, innovation, growth, and change. It is practice for the continual challenges we will face in life. To not take advantage of these opportunities or recreate them for ourselves is to waste our great strength. How can we expect to evolve in our lives and careers or participate in solving big problems if we instead invest our energy in creating a bubble where we can remain? comfortably numb. The fact that today, in these strange times, we are able to gather virtually to celebrate your accomplishments is a testament to our adaptive capacity. Nevertheless, it is okay to feel disappointed about not being able to celebrate as we normally would and to be anxious about the future. What I want you to realize is you're prepared for this and knowing the importance of our adaptive capacity and the need to cultivate it I hope Ohio State provided you with ample opportunities, whether nudged, pushed, shoved, or volunteered to participate in being outside of your comfort zone, to take risks and to fail. In fact, I hope all of you took risks and failed numerous times and in numerous ways because it was your response to such failures that makes your presence here today indicative of your adaptability, your flexibility, your mettle, and your potential. As a graduate of Ohio State, you are part of a privileged minority. Only 35% of people in the United States have a bachelor's degree, and less than 2% have a PhD. To earn these degrees, you amass skills and knowledge. You know what they say, knowledge is power. And the Peter Parker principle dictates that with great power comes great responsibility. One great responsibility we have as part of this privileged community 
is to be the ones to step outside of our comfort zone, to make this world a better place. After all, we have the knowledge and skills to make the discomfort more bearable and the risk more manageable. So many living things, including a great proportion of humanity, live in marginality, constantly shoved well outside their comfort zones into stressful conditions to accommodate the desires of those with power and privilege. OSU students continually inspire me. You all give me enormous hope because I know you care deeply about the world we live in and actively seek change. Some of what is out there is unpleasant to see. It is discomforting. But let me share with you something the great American writer James Baldwin once said. Not everything that, can, that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. So go out there and face the discomfort and make the change you want to see. Congratulations, OSU graduates. We are very proud of you. The ancient Greeks had a word for when their heroes performed feats in the face of great obstacles. This is kudos, which you have all amply merited. From the Department of Classics, congratulations to the class of 2020. On behalf of the History of Art Department, Vincent here and I wanted to say, you've already proven your perseverance and resiliency. Congratulations on everything you've achieved and very, very best wishes for a bright future. Hi, this is Chris Gremion, Chair of the Department of Anthropology. Congratulations to all our newly minted anthropologists. Debbie Blattelli Steinberg, Director of Undergraduate Studies, Department of Anthropology. Congratulations, Class of 2020, and all the best as you continue to evolve. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Thank you for sharing your time and discoveries with us over these years. And in the spirit of continuing that sharing, I leave you with an image of the lunar sample that's housed in the Glenn Institute lobby. It reminds me of limitless possibilities. I hope you find that and keep in touch and keep sharing with each other and us. Best wishes to all of you. On behalf of the Department of Astronomy, congratulations to everyone in the class of 2020. You live in a big and exciting universe. Explore it, enjoy it, and make it your own. Hi. I'm Mike Slater, director of the School of Communication. You guys are awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations, seniors of 2020. The Department of Comparative Studies wants to remind you of one really important thing. Critical thinking enhances your capacity for joy. Stay critical, stay joyful. Good luck. Hi, I'm Scott Levi, chair of the Department of History. And I'm Sarah Butler, vice chair. And we'd like to congratulate all of our majors. And minors. And everyone else in the class of 2020. Congratulations. Congratulations, linguistics undergrads. Congratulations from linguistics. Congratulations to the class of 2020. The Department of Molecular Genetics is so proud of your accomplishments. Now go out and do great things and stay in touch. OH. I know. Oh. Congratulations. Congratulations, everybody. Bill Ballinger, Director, School of Music. Oh, come, let's sing Ohio's praise and songs to alma mater raise. Congrats, class of 2020. My name is Ilan Agar. I'm from the Department of Mirror Eastern Languages and Cultures. Congratulations, graduates. As chair of the psychology department, I just want to say, don't let COVID-19 ruin your day. Congratulations, class of 2020. Here's to a truly memorable Buckeye graduation celebration. Congratulations, graduates. We know you're gonna set the world on fire. Go Bucks! A hearty congratulations to the class of 2020 from the Department of Women's, Gender, and Sexuality Studies. The world is more ripe for change than ever. Get out there and make yourself notorious. Congratulations. Congratulations, graduating students. You've worked so hard You've done amazing things. You should be very proud of yourselves and you should know that we're really proud of you. Good 
Congratulations 2020 graduates from the Department of African American and African Studies. We wish you the best. Go Bucks. Hey seniors, a message from the English department. Congratulations on your graduation. Great job. Congratulations class of 2020. We're grateful for your adaptability, grit, and curiosity. We know that you're prepared to pursue your dreams and positively contribute to the world. Thank you from all of us in the Department of Microbiology. Go Bucks. I'm Greg Caldera. I'm the chair of the Department of Political Science. And I'm Vlad Kogan. I'm the director of undergraduate studies. Congratulations, and may all of your days be sunny. Class of 2020, we're really proud of you, and we're looking forward to seeing everything that you accomplish. Congratulations! Congratulations. From all of us in the Department of Sociology to the class of 2020, congratulations. You showed a lot of perseverance, and you'll do great. Good luck. I am the Marquise du Chatelet, dropping in to congratulate the class of 2020 on behalf of my philosopher colleagues at The Ohio State University. Herzlichen Glückwunsch zum Uni-Abschluss. Congratulations to the class of 2020 from all of us in the Department of Germanic Languages and Literatures. Let's go. One, two, three. Congratulations. 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 Yes. <laughs> One, two, three. On behalf of the Department of Spanish and Portuguese, felicidades and parabéns. It's been a pleasure having many of you in our classes over the past several years. Buena suerte, boa sorte. Congratulations to all the 2020 chemistry and biochemistry graduates. Congratulations to the graduating class of chemistry and biochemistry. I look forward to seeing all of your accomplishments. Congratulations, class of 2020. May quantity demanded for your services always exceed quantity supplied. You have come a long way with your determination and hard work. Congratulations. On behalf of the economics department, congratulations, class of 2020. Congratulations, graduates. On behalf of the School of Earth Sciences, we wish you great success. Help make the world a better place. Don't lose your dinosaur. This is John Freudstein, the chair of Evolution Ecology and Organismal Biology. On behalf of our entire department, I want to wish all the graduates of the e and and Zoology programs and all Arts and Sciences graduates the best of luck. Congratulations. Hey, this is Karen Hutzel, Chair of the Department of Arts Administration, Education and Policy, and Interim Chair of the Department of Arts. Congratulations to all the graduates. And remember, art is essential. Hello, Eddie Taketa from the Department of Dance, where things never stop. Congratulations, Class of 2020. Keep on moving. Congratulations to the class of 2020 from everyone at the Department of Dance. Whatever you do, keep moving and keep dancing. Hey, theater grads. Theater grads. Theater grads. I wish you all the best. I wish you heart and soul. Be brilliant. Be bold. Be strong. I'm so proud of you all. We are so proud of all the things you've done. Artists and the scholars you've become. Congratulations. 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 Congratulations, class of 2020. On behalf of the Department of Comparative Studies, I want to say congratulations. Here's some artwork from my four-year-old to send you on your way and remind you that what you do with your gifts and strengths now is gonna shape his future. Good luck. Class of 2020. Congratulations. And best wishes. From the physics department. Greetings, class of 2020. I'm Jean Lafon, chair of the mathematics department, and I wanna congratulate you on all you have achieved. To our mathematics and actuarial science majors, I tell you, may your relations be reflexive, your spaces be complete, and your inequalities always go the right way. To all of you, I wish you health, happiness, and a prosperous life. Congratulations to everyone graduating in Deal, the Department of East Asian Languages and Literature. Good luck in your career. On behalf of the Department of Statistics and the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, congratulations to all of our graduating data analytics majors. Hi, class of 2020. My name is Eric Bielfeld from the Department of Speech and Hearing Science. 
I'm immensely grateful for everything that the students here at Ohio State do for me and done for my career and my life. And I wish you the best going forward. And I'm so proud to have you as alumni of our university. Congratulations and enjoy this day. My name is Yana Heshamova and I chair the Slavic department and would like to congratulate all of our majors for their hard work during this highly unusual semester, but especially our graduating seniors. We have 15 double majors graduating now and I believe they have exciting careers ahead of them, leaving you with nothing but best wishes for a healthy and fulfilling life. Good luck. Hello, class of 2020. I am Darla Monroe and the chair of the Department of Geography. Well done. Uh, we wish you all the best in your bright future. Go out and change the world. Congratulations to the graduates of the class of 2020. You've worked hard over the last few years. Career success is proud to have helped you prepare for your lifetime of opportunity. We wish you the best as you pursue your next steps. From everyone at Career Success, congratulations. congratulations. To all of the graduates in the College of Arts and Sciences, congratulations. We're incredibly proud of your achievements. Congratulations from Social and Behavioral Sciences and well done on your four years at Ohio State. Look forward to seeing you back on campus. Well done. Hats off to the members of the class of 2020. While we all regret that we will not be able to present you with your diploma in Ohio Stadium tomorrow, we sincerely hope to see you back on campus for a moment of celebration in the very near future. Meanwhile, please stay healthy and best wishes on the roads ahead, wherever your arts and sciences degree takes you. Hi, class of 2020. I'm Wendy Smooth from the Arts and Sciences Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And I want to wish you much success in all of your future endeavors. You are especially equipped to handle the challenges of the 21st century. And always know, no matter where you go, near or far, we are always with you. You only have to issue the big O-H-I-O is always sure to follow. Congratulations to the class of 2020. We're looking forward to seeing you change the world. To all of the 2020 graduates of the College of Arts and Sciences, I want you to know that we're really proud of you and all that you've achieved here. And we want you to take those skills, the knowledge, the orientation that you've developed here out into the world. We need you now more than ever. But before you do that, I hope you'll take a moment to celebrate with your family and your friends for all that you've achieved. Congratulations and go Bucks. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. As you've been reminded, your arts and sciences education has prepared you well for a world that is complicated and challenging, but also rich and varied and full of happy surprises. Your paths through that world will be varied too, with unexpected twists and turns. We look forward to following those journeys wherever they may lead, and we'd love to hear from you along the way. So goodbye only for now, and congratulations.